Hello. In this lesson we're going to take a look at potential difference and electromotive force. Potential difference is often abbreviated to PD and often referred to as voltage. Electromotive force often abbreviated to EMF. Now in this part of the lesson we're going to take a look at the basics and in part two we're going to look at some calculations. First of all, let me point out that voltage and EMF are often mixed up with one another. People talk about the voltage of a battery, but they really mean the EMF of the battery. And the confusion arises partly because both voltage and EMF are measured in volts and also because they have very similar meanings. By the end of the lesson hopefully you'll know the correct use of each term. Let me also point out that electromotive force is not actually a force despite the word force in the name. EMF is not a force in the sense that weight is a force measured in newtons. EMF is actually measured in volts and you can think of it as a sort of a force which is a push on the charges in a circuit which causes them to flow and produce a current but it's not a true force. To help us understand voltage and EMF let's look at a model of a circuit and in this model we have a hollow tube filled with table tennis balls and we have a little window here so that we can push the balls around and make the balls go round and round rather like electrons flow around in an, uh, in an electrical circuit. The inside of the tube is smooth so there's no friction except for the points where I've marked red and I've got one area at the top and one area at the bottom that have some friction shown in red. Now if you think carefully if you start pushing the balls round they'll start moving and settle down to a steady speed depending on how hard you're pushing. Let's put some actual numbers in. First of all, let's supposing that you're pushing on each ball as it goes by and you're supplying 5 joules of energy for each ball. So you're doing some work pushing the balls and you're providing 5 joules per ball. Eventually what will happen is the balls will settle down to a steady speed and it will keep that steady speed while you're providing the energy. Of course you're providing the energy to overcome the resistance of the bits that have friction and they will get warm. Let's suppose the top bit produces two joules of heat for each ball that passes through and the bottom one produces three joules of heat for each ball. When the thing is moving steadily, I hope you can see that the five joules that you're supplying to keep the balls moving round is being turned to heat. Two at the top, three at the bottom. The numbers add up. The five joules here is two joules plus three joules. And that is because of the law of conservation of energy. Let's take a look at a typical simple electrical circuit. I hope you see the similarities between this and the model. We have a cell which provides the push on the electrons, push on the charges, and they get pushed around the circuit. In fact the electrons go the opposite way, but we often say the conventional current goes from positive to negative. So let's say the current is being pushed around the circuit the way I show you. What happens to the charges? Well when they go through the top bulb some heat and light is generated. That's what happens in a bulb. Bottom bulb heat and light is generated. What's happening is very very similar to our model and if you think about the model with the table tennis balls you'll understand what's happening in the electrical circuit quite well. Okay, let's put some numbers 
in. Let's suppose that the cell provides 5 joules for each coulomb of charge that passes through it. A bit like providing 5 joules for each ball we push by. What happens to the energy? Well, it's turned to heat and light. In the top bulb, let's assume that 2 joules are turned to heat and light for each coulomb that passes through the bulb. And in the bottom bulb, let's assume 3 joules per coulomb is turned to heat and light. Of course, the numbers have got to add up. These are the same numbers as we used in the model to help you relate the model to the actual circuit. This number, the 5 joules per coulomb, tells you the EMF, the electromotive force of the cell. Things that supply electrical energy generate what we call an electromotive force, and the value of that electromotive force is just the amount of energy given to the charges uh, per coulomb. It's 5 joules per coulomb in this example. On the other hand, some other items don't provide electrical energy, they use it up. This top bulb has a voltage across it of 2 joules per coulomb. It's turned 2 joules of energy to heat and light for each coulomb that passes through. And we say the voltage across it is 2 joules per coulomb. Similarly, the bottom bulb has a voltage across it of 3 joules per coulomb. Let's look at the cell. We've already said 5 joules per coulomb are being turned from chemical energy to electrical energy in the cell. 5 joules for each coulomb that passes through. We s say the electromotive force of the cell is 5 joules per coulomb. That's what we mean by electromotive force. It's actually defined in terms of energy per coulomb. We have a special symbol for electromotive force. We use what my physics teacher used to call a curly E. And we don't use an ordinary E because that's too easily confused with energy. So we have a symbol for electromotive force, which, well, the proper name is a script E. The font is script. But I'll call it curly E in honour of my physics teacher. And curly E, the electromotive force, is 5 joules per coulomb. We get 5 joules of electrical energy for each coulomb that passes through the cell. We could also write this as 5 JC to the minus 1. It means exactly the same thing. But importantly, we call a joule per coulomb a volt. So 5 joules per coulomb is the same as 5 volts. A joule per coulomb is a volt. And the symbol for volt is a capital V. So finally, I could express what's going on by saying the EMF is 5 volts. And that's EMF applied to a cell, a supplier of electrical energy. Let's look at what's happening in one of the bulbs. In the top bulb, let's label one side A and the other side B. We know that two joules of energy, electrical energy, are being turned to heat and light for each coulomb that passes through the bulb. And this is where the idea of voltage or yeah, uh, sorry, voltage or potential difference comes from. The potential difference across the bulb, or we can say the potential difference between A and B, is 2 joules per coulomb. It means that for each coulomb that passes from A to B, 2 joules of electrical energy are turned to some other form. symbol for voltage is a capital V, so we can write V equals 2 joules per coulomb, or in index form V equals 2 JC to the minus 1. But of course a joule per coulomb is the same as a volt, so we can write V equals 2 volts. If you use the symbol for volts, we end up writing V equals 2V, which looks a bit peculiar, looks like the V's should cancel but that's not what it means at all. That means voltage is 2 volts. Take a look at the overall circuit we've discussed then. We've got a cell supplying a certain amount of energy for each coulomb that passes through it, and two bulbs. The EMF is 5 volts, and the two voltages for each bulb 
top bulb two volts, bottom bulb three volts. We can write VAB to mean the voltage between A and B and VCD to mean the voltage between points C and D. Look at that carefully. Compare it to the diagram of the table tennis balls that we talked about earlier and I hope you'll see exactly what is going on. That leads us up to a definition of electromotive force. So we'll do it using an equation. The ele electromotive force of a source of electrical energy is this thing. It's the amount of electrical energy produced divided by the amount of charge which passes through the source. And let's see how that works with a simple example. Suppose a battery produces 24 joules of electrical energy when 4 coulombs passes through it. What's its EMF? Well, the amount of electrical energy is 24. The amount of charge is 4. 24 divided by 4 is 6 volts. The EMF of the battery is 6 volts. And it just means that 6 joules of energy are being provided for each coulomb that passes through the battery. 6 joules per coulomb. All we did was divide the energy by the amount of charge. The potential difference or voltage between two points is very similar. It's the amount of electrical energy transferred, maybe to heat or light, it doesn't matter. It's the amount of ele electrical energy used divided by the amount of charge passing between the points. I should say points. And simple example, a bulb converts 15 joules of electrical energy when 10 joules passes through it. All we have to do is to find the voltage, the potential difference is divide the amount of electrical energy by the amount of charge. 15 joules divided by 10 coulombs is 1.5 joules per coulomb. So the voltage across the bulb is 1.5 volts. OK, I hope that's helpful. Remember the EMF is a term applied to sources of electrical energy and voltage is a term applied to users of electrical energy like bulbs. At least that's true in circuits, simple circuits. I hope you find part two which will follow useful.